What's the worst thing you did as a horny teen? I was in theater, and during plays, we would have to run to a tiny area and change clothes. They had a small separator in the middle for boys and girls, but it wasn't uncommon for someone in a hurry to step out mid-change in a rush to not miss their entrance. During one show I was in freshman year, I was going in to change and saw hot senior girl walking out with her skirt a little too high, and I caught a glance of her vag for a brief second. I then proceeded to rush to the bathroom and rub one out, and after I finished, I changed and missed my entrance by three to five minutes. So I walked on stage and improved my way back into the scene, told everyone I had gotten sick and threw up, and then rushed back on stage. Everyone applauded me and praised my dedication to the theater. 10 out of 10 would jerk again. Jerk again. Poor people who have dated rich people, what did you learn? My ex-wife had a grandfather that was a multi-millionaire. Christmas time at their house was like being in another world. All of the different family members would try to get a moment with the king and would suck up to him as much as possible. I spent my time down on the ground playing with my kids and was happy to get out of there. About a week or two after the second Christmas, I got a phone call from grandpa. He wanted to know what he could do for my family. I told him I didn't want any of his money, but I would like my kids to know their great grandfather. Later that year, he showed up at our place unexpected and spent most of the afternoon telling stories with me about his youth. He set up a trust fund for each one of my kids to have their college paid for. A little bit after that, he told me out of all of his in-laws, I was the only one that never asked him for anything but to be himself. Be himself. Poor people who have dated rich people, what did you learn? My ex-wife had a grandfather that was a multi-millionaire. Christmas time at their house was like being in another world. All of the different family members would try to get a moment with the king and would suck up to him as much as possible. I spent my time down on the ground playing with my kids and was happy to get out of there. About a week or two after the second Christmas, I got a phone call from grandpa. He wanted to know what he could do for my family. I told him I didn't want any of his money, but I would like my kids to know their great grandfather. Later that year, he showed up at our place on unexpected and spent most of the afternoon telling stories with me about his youth. He set up a trust fund for each one of my kids to have their college paid for. A little bit after that, he told me out of all of his in-laws, I was the only one that never asked him for anything but to be himself. Be himself. I dumped my girlfriend after she told me about her sexual past in college. To make a long story short, we were playing a drinking game with some friends and she admitted to having at least two threesomes during college and sleeping with around 13 guys. To be honest, I never asked her about her past before, cause I just thought it was whatever. But damn, something about hearing that made me squeamish. I don't think I'll ever recover honestly. I know some people are gonna call me a misogynistic or a s-shamer but I honestly couldn't care less. I knew I could never recover or move past what I heard. I broke up with her next day and said I hope you find someone right for you one day. She obviously started crying and she's still texting me, but I'm already mentally checked out. I'm 24, so I know I got a full life ahead of me, ahead of me, ahead of me. What's the dumbest thing you've done out of pure horniness? On weekends during high school, I frequently would sneak out of the house and sneak into my girlfriend at the time's parents' house. Well, I didn't have a car or a driver's license at the time, and the only car I could use was my mom's standard Toyota Camry. This led to many situations of me being stalled out on a hill at 3 a.m. with no driver's license, but I did learn how to drive standard quite well. My mom was really confused by that. Also, sometimes I would tell my parents I was staying the night with a friend and have my parents drop me off at school for my friends to pick me up. Well, my GF at the time lived about a mile from school, so I would just walk to her place. But when I would spend the night, I would have to hide in the closet, leave by 5 a.m. because her dad always came and checked on her before he left for work. So, that led to a couple instances of sleeping in the closet, but the best slash worst was when I had to leave, but no place to stay. So before this situation, my buddy was able to obtain a copy of the key to the guy's locker room, and I happened to have it that night. So after being kicked out of her place and, of course, getting my rocks off, I walked back to school and managed to sneak into the locker room. Victim. Victim. My neighbor bangs on the floor. I have an upstairs neighbor who always bangs on the floor when she thinks I'm being too loud. She also leaves notes on my fence, shaming me to the street. However, despite her strict rules of conduct, she herself stomps around her apartment and plays loud music at 6.30 a.m. while she showers. It's quite entertaining, I must say. I live, laugh, and love here under her reign every day. The other day we had our first day of spring. It was a beautiful and warm day with a gentle breeze that entered the house. I noticed that my naughty neighbor had her balcony doors open too. So I immediately decided to do a little DIY project. I grabbed some spray paint, closed my doors with my dog inside, and started repainting the legs of my outdoor chairs. Every time my neighbor closed her doors, I took a break. And as soon as she reopened them, I went back outside to apply another coat of paint, letting the fumes drift into her house with the lovely spring breeze. I could hear her slamming the door a little harder each time, and it was like sweet music to my ears. I made sure the entire painting process took the whole day so she couldn't fully enjoy the sunshine. It was such a satisfying success that I might consider taking up furniture revamping as a new hobby. And hobby. And hobby. Good morning sir, how can I assist you? 
Sir? Did I get in the wrong line? No, this is the right one, sir. You asked me if I need assistance. That mm -hmm. implies that I need a service. I'm not here for a service. I'm here okay. to purchase a product. I am here to purchase coffee. Oh, well, I do brew the coffee for um, you, which is a service. No, not necessarily, okay. because if you had a self-serving option, then I would just go ahead and do that. But I'd okay. still be purchasing the product, yeah, I, which I is see, what I'm trying to do. Okay, would you like to buy a coffee? Okay, now we're making more sense. All right, I'll have the Robusta variety. Okay, great. Do you know where that's from? This one's from Gambia, sir. Okay, all right. You're redeeming yourself a bit. So happy to hear that. Um, <clears throat> and I'll have that at pH 6. Oh, like pH level? So you want milk or? <laughs> yes, that's what that means. My ex cheated on me because she thought I was going to break up with her. So for a little backstory, I 33M had been dating Sarah 32F for six years and loved every second of it. We were literally soulmates and so obviously I was going to ask her to marry me. I decided that I would take her to a really expensive restaurant and when we got back I would have a beautiful display with loads of flowers and a sign asking her to marry me. So when the day came I was all dressed up in a 400 pound suit and when I told Sarah we needed to go she came downstairs in a t-shirt, jumper and jeans. This upset me quite a bit. Once we were in the car and halfway to the restaurant Sarah told me she felt ill asked if I would pull over at the pharmacy and get her some paracetamol. Thinking nothing of it I obliged. However, when I came out of the store my car was missing and there was an envelope addressed to me where the car was parked. Inside the envelope were pictures of her naked with another man and a note that said she knew I was going to break up with her so she decided to cheat on me and leave me before I could do it to her. Obviously, when she arrived home and saw the display I had set up in our room she realized she had made a massive mistake. About 10 minutes after being abandoned I got a call from her. She started the call by claiming it was a big joke but when I mentioned the pictures she became really apologetic and then followed up by telling me she can't wait to get married. I hung up and called my friend and asked if I could stay the night which is where I am writing this from. I've got no clue what I should do. Should I take her back? Should I take her back? Should I take People, what is your downright scariest real life story? Serious. I was home alone when I was 11. I had just fallen asleep and someone tried to break in the front door. I called 911 and hid in the pantry in the bottom shelf. They came to the door next to the pantry and tried to break into that door too. The police got there and one of them picked me up and held me until my mom got there. I wouldn't let go and he made sure I felt safe. I'm 27 and haven't stayed home alone much since. The day I signed a lease for my first apartment I got a dog so I wouldn't be alone. It's pretty traumatizing when you're that young. I was 6 and watched my 3 year old sister get run over by my uncle's car. She was playing at the bottom of a hill driveway. Uncle was working on a car up top and it slipped out of gear. I watched the car moving and called to my sister but she didn't move. Which ended up likely saving her life as she didn't get hit by the wheels. She was small enough that she got drugged underneath it a few feet. I was absolutely speechless and ran to find my aunt. She went in an ambulance to the hospital but was relatively okay. No lasting physical damage. What did a teacher say that made you immediately walk out of the classroom? Gym class, swimming. We were told from day one that if we did not dress out and swim on swim day we would fail the class. No excuses even for periods. And we had to swim with the boys. I love swimming, so I had no desire to avoid it. But on swim day, on the way to the pool, the boys all started grabbing us all by the butts and breasts and the coach seemed to egg it on by pushing us into a tiny lobby by the pool. Us girls were all screaming and fighting but the coach laughed and called us prissies. I immediately ran back to the locker room to get dressed. After that, every swim day I refused to dress out. My mother supported my decision. I was threatened every day with failure. I did not care. But then my friend, who was a shy, quiet, good girl said she could not swim because her periods were so heavy she was very sick. The coach forced her to run bleachers until the passed out. I saw it because I also had to run bleachers for refusing to dress out. After that, I started all out war against the coach and convinced most of the girls to refuse dressing out. I refused to finish the physical fitness test. Every, every. What did you find out about your wife husband only after you got married? All the time we were together before, I probably would have said I would have liked a little more traditional romance. But I appreciated how straightforward and pragmatic he was about other things and thought I can't have it both ways. I could add that he is a theoretical physicist who works with engineers, and he has the personality to match. He always said he thought marriage was essentially meaningless, eventually, for external reasons. We decided to do it. We threw together a cheap little ceremony in a few weeks to get it over with as we both put it. He put on his suit. I put on my pretty dress, we had the officiant there and got started. However, when it came time for the vows and the ring exchange, I suddenly found myself facing a very sentimental man, who was clearly deeply in love with me and overjoyed to be marrying me. After that, the same man who took years to feel comfortable holding my hand in public for even 5 minutes was hugging and kissing me in front of everyone at every moment he could during the ceremony. Then he wanted to celebrate every week anniversary, then every month anniversary with romantic dinners and having the same cake we had at our wedding. He starts celebrating at 12.01 am on our anniversaries. Good morning, sir. How can I assist you? Sir? Did I get in the wrong line? No, this is the right one, sir. 
you ask me if I need assistance, that mm -hmm. implies that I need a service. I'm not here for a service. I'm here okay. to purchase a product. I am here to purchase coffee. Oh, well, I do brew the coffee for um, you, which is a service. No, not necessarily, okay. because if you had a self-serving option, then I would just go ahead and do that. But okay. I'd still be purchasing the product, yeah, I, which I is see, what I'm trying to do. Okay, would you like to buy a coffee? Okay, now we're making more sense. All right, I'll have the Robusta variety. Okay, great. Do you know where that's from? This one's from Gambia, sir. Okay, all right. You're redeeming yourself a bit. So happy to hear that. Um, <clears throat> and I'll have that at pH 6. Oh, like pH level? So you want milk or? <laughs> yes, that's what that means. What's the most horrific act committed by someone you know personally? Guy I went to school with was real calm, very smart, and everyone loved him. He was a gentle person from what I remember. He had lost his mom a couple years before this. She was a nurse and they found her dead in a hospital room during her shift. Unknown causes. Our senior year of high school, dude is a championship wrestler, dominating his grades, and just doing good. He lived with his dad who was a police officer for years and years. At lunch one day he left school and came back. Everything was normal and the day was finished out. His dad did not show up for work that evening, and the police department sent someone to go knock on his door. They found the house ransacked and his dad lying in bed, deceased. Later that night they called my grandmother in for questioning because she cleaned their house once a week. Not much later than that, the guy I went to school with broke down and confessed that he had come home on lunch to ask for money, and he and his dad got in an argument. His dad laid down like normal for his shift, and he took his dad's service pistol, gunned him down, and after realizing what he'd done, he'd freaked out and turned the house upside down to make it look like a robbery, then went and finished the day at school to try to make it seem like he had no clue what had happened. Shunned. Shunned. What's the worst thing you did as a horny teen? I was in theater and during plays we would have to run to a tiny area and change clothes. They had a small separator in the middle for boys and girls, but it wasn't uncommon for someone in a hurry to step out mid-change in a rush to not miss their entrance. During one show I was in freshman year, I was going in to change and saw hot senior girl walking out with her skirt a little too high, and I caught a glance of her vag for a brief second. I then proceeded to rush to the bathroom and rub one out, and after I finished, I changed and missed my entrance by three to five minutes. So I walked on stage and improved my way back into the scene, told everyone I had gotten sick and threw up, and then rushed back on stage. Everyone applauded me and praised my dedication to the theater. 10 out of 10, would jerk again, jerk again. My neighbor bangs on the floor. I have an upstairs neighbor who always bangs on the floor when she thinks I'm being too loud. She also leaves notes on my fence, shaming me to the street. However, despite her strict rules of conduct, she herself stomps around her apartment and plays loud music at 6.30 a.m. while she showers. It's quite entertaining, I must say. I live, laugh, and love here under her reign every day. The other day we had our first day of spring. It was a beautiful and warm day with a gentle breeze that entered the house. I noticed that my naughty neighbor had her balcony doors open too. So I immediately decided to do a little DIY project. I grabbed some spray paint, closed my doors with my dog inside, and started repainting the legs of my outdoor chairs. Every time my neighbor closed her doors, I took a break. And as soon as she reopened them, I went back outside to apply another coat of paint, letting the fumes drift into her house with the lovely spring breeze. I could hear her slamming the door a little harder each time, and it was like sweet music to my ears. I made sure the entire painting process took the whole day, so she couldn't fully enjoy the sunshine. It was such a satisfying success that I might consider taking up furniture revamping as a new hobby, and hobby, and hobby. My boyfriend said the quiet part out loud. Last night my boyfriend, 20, and me, 21 female, were going to have some fun. For context, this is the only non-abusive relationship I've ever had, especially in regards to lovemaking. To put it lightly, my other relationships didn't give a crap about me or my pleasure. Sometimes I get worried my current boyfriend doesn't care about my pleasure, but I've been convincing myself that I'm just paranoid and putting up a wall because of my last relationships. So we're getting in the mood. And I notice once again he is not doing much for me and I'm doing everything for him and his pleasure, for instance, this happens often, I put his hand down there and he moves it away, I tell him I really want to finish tonight and he immediately does an annoyed face with a big sigh, I'm confused, he says but that's so much work making you finish, I don't know if it's your ADHD or something but. And I immediately stop what I'm doing and my mind goes blank. I do have ADHD, but let me tell you, this man doesn't do anything to pleasure me, he has said he finds vaginas gross so let me tell you this has nothing to do with my ADHD, last night he confirmed my worst fears, that for five effing years I've been dating him and he doesn't and he doesn't and he When did you realize your friends were actually fake friends? When I slowly realized I was only around for chores and errands, rise to the airport, pick up furniture, help move, anything social always resulted in either last minute cancellations, showing up 45 minutes late and bolting after 10 minutes, I thought they were busy, but no.
When I returned to work after being off for three months due to an injury and I practically begged them to go grab a beer and do pub trivia but all three of them passed because they had plans, well it turns out their plans were to go grab a beer and do pub trivia. Without me, found out through social media, deleted it shortly afterwards, I've been a lot less sad about things since I've deleted social media and stopped looking at them as friends and just as work acquaintances. It took that for me to realize that the friendships were really one-sided and I'm better off not pursuing anything other than being cordial at work. When I was babysitting her kids things were going great. We would hang out all the time, have movie nights and just talk and chill, but the second she no longer needed a babysitter was the second I got kicked to the curb, no explanation, not even a text back. What's your personal butterfly effect story? My aunt was always, always on time to everywhere. It's trauma left over from her childhood. She lived in the Bronx and worked in lower Manhattan, so she usually had to get up pretty early to get to work on time. One night, the power in her building went out. No idea why it was the only building in the area affected. Her digital alarm had reset when the power came back on, so her alarm did not wake her up. She woke up with 30 minutes before she should be at work. Panicking, she got ready and ran to the subway. The subway by her apartment was having maintenance issues and she got stuck for 20 minutes three stops away. For the first time in her life, she called into work sick, saying she'd be in too late and would work overtime the next day. She walked back to her apartment and fell asleep. She woke up about four hours later when one of my other aunts was pounding on her door. My other aunt was hysterical because she hadn't been answering her phone. And that's how a weird electrical mishap caused my aunt's alarm clock to reset, making her late, missing her train, meaning she avoided being in the building next to the World Trade Center on 9, 11. 11. 11. What is the funniest real life story you can tell? One day in college, the teacher had stapled answer sheets to the back of every test by mistake. A few minutes after passing the test around, his phone rang and he stepped out. Everyone had noticed the answer sheet and we decided that we could all use it and tear it off after. So I checked each of the answers and they were all correct except for the last one. We were to draw a flowchart for the process. I checked the answer sheet and it said answers will vary. I drew my flowchart, tore the answer sheet off, and walked to the front of the podium to turn in the test. When I got to the podium, I had to know. I needed to see what everyone else had drawn for the flowchart. Everyone had written on their tests, answers will vary. Answers will vary. Answers will vary. What's the best mistake you've ever made? I made a mistake and asked the wrong woman out on a date. I have trouble remembering names and faces. There was a girl named Vicky that I talked to during lunch breaks at school. There was another girl named Marie that I met once at a cookout. I had an event coming up with dinner and dancing, and I wanted to ask Vicky to be my date since I knew her better. One day, while rushing between classes, a girl named Vicky stopped me and said hello. I surprised her by asking her to come with me to the event. She agreed, and I took out my notepad to write down her number. I wrote down the name Vicky, but she told me that wasn't her name. I apologized for my mistake and asked her what her name was. It was Marie. I realized that I had asked out the wrong girl, but I didn't want to back out since she had already said yes. We went on the date, and that night, we both fell in love. Three weeks later, we got engaged. It has been 38 years since then, and we have a son together. We are still happily together, and yes, she knows the whole story. Kids who just graduated high school, did anything crazy happen at your graduation? Yeah. I hit my pen when they called my name and my principal slapped me. I'm a senior in high school, and I've always been a bit of a troublemaker. Throughout my high school years, I've been caught smoking behind the school, skipping classes, and pulling pranks on teachers. My parents and others have had their fair share of complaints about my behavior. The day of my high school graduation finally arrives. The ceremony is held at the school's football stadium, with proud parents and family members in attendance. The air is filled with anticipation and excitement as we prepare to receive our diplomas and close the chapter on our high school lives. As I'm waiting for my name to be called to walk across the stage, I get this wild idea. I decide that, as a final act of rebellion, I'm going to hit my dab pen in front of everyone when they call my name. My friends, knowing my plan, have their phones out, ready to record the whole thing. They're egging me on, and I can't help but feel like the man. They call my name, and everyone cheers and claps as I walk toward the front of the stage. I whip out my dab pen, take a massive hit, and start screaming, Yodi gang, you feel me? Faded than a hoe. Faded than a hoe. Paying ho- Paying ho- what will never not be funny? Accidentally walking in on my dad, my uncle, and my grandma smoking of my grandma's medical marijuana as a teen. My grandma saying, are you in or are you out? Mostly asking if I was going to keep this secret from my aunt. Not knowing any of them smoked and saying yes. Because how often does that opportunity occur all at once? I take a couple hits and we go to dinner, hot dogs and macaroni. We all keep our cool 
probably too silently eating our food, and I look over as I'm trying to suction off that inevitable first bite of bread bun from the roof of my mouth, and I lock eyes with my tiny little grandma doing the same thing, and the seal of silence broke, and we laughed so hard despite trying to hold back. My uncle and dad covered their plates as we burst out laughing, mouths full, my aunt in utter confusion and sudden realization all at once, just shaking her head while we tried to control ourselves to no end. Best memory ever. Still makes me laugh. It's the small things in life, there's nothing bigger, nothing bigger. Would I be the hole if I break up with my GF over her weight? I, 28 meters, I'm 6'5", 200 pounds and go to the gym 3 times a week and go for jogs daily. I met my GF, 24, at the gym about 2 years ago. She's smaller and was thin at the time, she was cute and funny, and we hit it off really well. Almost a year ago we decided to move in together, and I noticed then she had gained a couple pounds, but didn't think anything of it. Ever since then she has consistently put on more and more weight. Easily 60 plus pounds now. Of course she no longer works out either. I find her eating habits and appearance gross now. The thin girl I was so attracted to has been replaced by an insatiable eater. She eats bags of candy and wants fast food for every meal. The apartment we are renting lease is ending in April. She has been hinting at wanting to get married, but I'm thinking of cutting her and the apartment free at lease end. So my question is. Would I be the hole if I dump my girlfriend because she has gained so much weight I'm no longer attracted to her. We're attracted to her. We're attracted to her. We're attracted to her. What's the corniest thing you've ever done that you now realize was just plain stupid? Me and this girl was always the last two off the school bus, when everyone else got off we would hold hands and that progressed into feeling each other up. Well, one day she told me her parents would be leaving for the afternoon after she got off the bus and invited me over. I was 15 at the time, so I rode my Honda three-wheeler eight miles in the cold so I could finally seal the deal with my school bus crush. Might not sound like a big deal, but eight miles on a three-wheeler in the freezing cold was a pretty dumb move. The ride there was full of excitement, the ride home was full of regret. Oh no, why the regret? It took me so long to get there, by the time things got heated her parents was pulling up the driveway. Thank God she had a long driveway, I hopped back on my three-wheeled love machine I had parked in the woods and started the long journey home. Our bus lust continued until she got a boyfriend and I never got a second chance. What did a teacher say that made you immediately walk out of the classroom? Gym class, swimming. We were told from day one that if we did not dress out and swim on swim day we would fail the class. No excuses even for periods. And we had to swim with the boys, I love swimming, so I had no desire to avoid it. But on swim day, on the way to the pool, the boys all started grabbing us all by the butts and breasts and the coach seemed to egg it on my pushing us into a tiny lobby by the pool. Us girls were all screaming and fighting but the coach laughed and called us prissies. I immediately ran back to the locker room to get dressed. After that, every swim day I refused to dress out. My mother supported my decision. I was threatened every day with failure. I did not care. But then my friend, who was a shy, quiet, good girl said she could not swim because her periods were so heavy she was very sick. The coach forced her to run bleachers until the passed out. I saw it because I also had to run bleachers for refusing to dress out. After that, I started all-out war against the coach and convinced most of the girls to refuse dressing out. I refused to finish the physical fitness test. Every- Every- R slash two sentence order. I asked my mom if she wanted to be buried or cremated. She only sobbed and pleaded with me to kill her first. I got a call from my father that my mom passed away today. Who am I living with? There's this girl, Jessica, in my second grade class who never participates, so I've been trying to call on her during reading time, but she never reads. I've been mildly frustrated lately until one of my students asked me why I always called on Jessica, even though there was no one named Jessica in her class. What's the cringiest thing you've seen a bride do at her wedding? Ask money to fund their expensive honeymoon. A close friend of mine wanted a grand honeymoon after their wedding. She got these ideas on social media, where people spend a week in the Bahamas. She is an aspiring Instagram influencer and would do anything to look expensive. She even shared how excited she is for their Bahamas trip and even shared to her followers, where they will stay at a five-star hotel. The time she is getting close to her wedding, she sends us a registry link to the product she wants. Wedding registry is basically a wish list for wedding couples, and they send it out to their guests who wish to give them a gift. Anyway, her registry was absurd expensive. She listed a lot like a $3,000 coffee machine. None of them drink coffee and $3,000 Hermes blankets. I thought she was out of her mind until the wedding where at the reception, she told everybody that they will pass a little bucket for us to put cash to fund their Bahamas trip and that it is mandatory. She wants it fully paid off and it was a total of $12,000 trip. I was shocked because looking at the guests, none of them were willing to fund the trip. I found out they only got $300.
years. My ex cheated on me because she thought I was going to break up with her. So for a little backstory I 33M had been dating Sarah 32F for 6 years and loved every second of it. We were literally soulmates and so obviously I was going to ask her to marry me. I decided that I would take her to a really expensive restaurant and when we got back I would have a beautiful display with loads of flowers and a sign asking her to marry me. So when the day came I was all dressed up in a 400 pound suit and when I told Sarah we needed to go she came downstairs in a t-shirt, jumper and jeans. This upset me quite a bit. Once we were in the car and halfway to the restaurant Sarah told me she felt ill asked if I would pull over at the pharmacy and get her some paracetamol. Thinking nothing of it I obliged. However, when I came out of the store my car was missing and there was an envelope addressed to me where the car was parked. Inside the envelope were pictures of her naked with another man and a note that said she knew I was going to break up with her so she decided to cheat on me and leave me before I could do it to her. Obviously, when she arrived home and saw the display I had set up in our room she realized she had made a massive mistake. About 10 minutes after being abandoned I got a call from her. She started the call by claiming it was a big joke but when I mentioned the pictures she became really apologetic and then followed up by telling me she can't wait to get married. I hung up and called my friend and asked if I could stay the night which is where I'm writing this from. I've got no clue what I should do. Should I take her back? Should I take her back? Should I take- Would I be the hole if I break up with my GF over her weight? I, 28 meters, I'm 6'5", 200 pounds and go to the gym 3 times a week and go for jogs daily. I met my GF, 24, at the gym about 2 years ago. She's smaller and was thin at the time, she was cute and funny, and we hit it off really well. Almost a year ago we decided to move in together, and I noticed then she had gained a couple pounds, but didn't think anything of it. Ever since then she has consistently put on more and more weight. Easily 60 plus pounds now. Of course she no longer works out either. I find her eating habits and appearance gross now. The thin girl I was so attracted to has been replaced by an insatiable eater. She eats bags of candy and wants fast food for every meal. The apartment we are renting lease is ending in April. She has been hinting at wanting to get married, but I'm thinking of cutting her and the apartment free at lease end. So my question is. Would I be the hole if I dump my girlfriend because she has gained so much weight I'm no longer attracted to her, we're attracted to her, we're attracted to her, we're attracted to her. I dumped my girlfriend after she told me about her sexual past in college. To make a long story short, we were playing a drinking game with some friends and she admitted to having at least two threesomes during college and sleeping with around 13 guys. To be honest I never asked her about her past before, cause I just thought it was whatever. But damn, something about hearing that made me squeamish. I don't think I'll ever recover honestly. I know some people are gonna call me a misogynistic or a s-shamer but I honestly couldn't care less. I knew I could never recover or move past what I heard. I broke up with her next day and said I hope you find someone right for you one day. She obviously started crying and she's still texting me, but I'm already mentally checked out. I'm 24, so I know I got a full life ahead of me, ahead of me, ahead of me.